even though I had a fantastic prognosis. Like the type of cancer I had had like a 90 something percent cure rate. Cure rate. But for me to have heard that word cancer, my, my Nana had passed away from breast cancer two years prior to that. And I saw what my mom had gone through and I saw what she'd gone through. So to hear that word automatically meant a death sentence to me. I'm Jen Luce. I'm a three-year ovarian cancer survivor. I had a rare form of ovarian cancer, which is an endodermal sinus tumor, germ cell tumor, which generally um, affects young women up to the age of 29. I was 26 when I was diagnosed. Oh, pardon me, I was not 26 when I was diagnosed. <laughs> I was 29 when I was diagnosed. I'm 32 right now. Within three, we three weeks, I was in for surgery and the mass was removed. And um, I remember being on the operating table and saying to her, if you don't have to take both, please don't. I would still like to have children. So this mass was removed and it was, a, it was about that big, um, attached to my right ovary, so they removed that in the fallopian tube. So all I, they did a, a peritoneal wash to make sure that everything was clean in, in the area and everything was, which was good. So to me, it was like, okay, this is it. That, that's all it was. It just, it was a mass and, um, and I'm okay now. So two weeks went by. I went into the cancer center, got myself registered in with that, sat down with an oncology nurse, sat down with the oncologist, sat down with another oncologist, and they said I had to start chemo. And I didn't want to do chemo. I didn't want to have to go through that. And the first thing I remember saying was, I, I can't, I'm starting school next week and you know, I've got this going on and it's my boyfriend's birthday coming up and I'm planning this and this and this. And she's like, no, well, this was a really fast growing cancer and we need to make sure that it doesn't come back and that we have to plummet you with treatment. So I'm going, okay. Two days later I started and it was such a blast of overwhelming, I don't know what you would call it, it was just, it was too much. It was way too much to have to deal with and I had no choice on waiting a week or what about preservation of my, of my eggs or what about any of this, They're like no, we can't wait, we have to get you in there as soon as possible. A ton of people came out of the woodwork that I had no idea really existed. Um, friends and family from people at work and people that had been infected by cancer in different ways um, all came out to try and help and support. Um, but I wasn't open to it. I wasn't open to receiving the help. So that support was there, but I wasn't accepting of it. And all I wanted was my boyfriend to look after me. This was someone I'd been with for three years and we were talking about getting married. So to have that diagnosis and to say, I don't want my mom, I want you here. Like you are my main support person because I have the most intimate connection with him. Um, looking back at it, it wasn't really the, the best thing for me to have done because he wasn't able to provide that care for me. Um, he had his own issues that to deal with. He had his own history of cancer in his family and whenever that can happen a lot of the times we can we hold ourselves back and we're afraid of the possibilities of what could happen. He was scared of losing me and so he he retreated to some degree. So I had to call my mom. I had to have her fly out. She she lived in my apartment on on a pullout um, in my living room for a week or two at a time during my treatments and that was really hard for me to have to let go for her to do. Um, being very self-sufficient and very vivacious and, and doing all my own things since quite a young age, um, having to depend on, on her was weird. I'm like, I've come all this way to get past that 
you know, I've, I've come through my life so I don't have to depend on her. You know, this is not a place I wanted to have to go back to. I went to a um, support group for ovarian cancer and they were all 60s plus and talking about who just died and who was coming up and it was so not my thing. It made me retreat, you know, even further. So then I was searching for support networks and came across um, one called Kalanish, which is my godsend. Um, they are this incredible group of people. So through Kalanish, I went on a young adult retreat and it was the first retreat that they had had. And that is where I began my healing process. Um, I met other people similar to myself and they are still a part of my community. Initially, I was petrified of going back to work, not being able to remember the name of a pencil. Like, I, like how am I supposed to function in this capacity, in my previous capacity, how I am now? So after a lot of time and deliberation between my psychiatrist, my oncologist, my general practitioner, we all came up with a um, gradual return to work program. Once I felt comfortable in even going back, um, and that took a long time. Work, thankfully, was quite open with the gradual return to work, and they were very flexible with my hours. It, I would kind of go all over the place. I would do maybe once a week for two or three hours at a time, and that would continue for a month or two, because that was all I could physically handle. I was exhausted just from having to think for two hours. It was, it was too much. It was too much overload. So I would increase my hours, and then it just it was too much, and I would decrease again, and I would increase, and, and then it started to just gradually increase, and I felt more comfortable. So to move into that, and to, but to be welcome, and my workplace was okay with the fact, was really big. I can't imagine if they were forcing me to go back to work. They were, they were really just allowing me to ease into it as I felt, as I felt comfortable with, and, and I would push myself through things to some degree to get myself back to a state that I felt like I was functioning before. I've been back to work since April of 08, so it's not even really been that long. It's not even been two years yet. And I would say until I felt comfortable Oh, it was probably seven or eight months after I started back at work. So it was like learning a whole brand new job again to some extent. I'm on nutritional supplements and I'm on anti-inflammatory natural medication that apparently does not contraindicate anything else. And all medically that I'm on, drug-wise, drug is an antidepressant. So came to the point of me having to say, okay, this is something I'm going to need to be on for a while. And being okay with that. Coming to a point, finally, when the cloud lifted from the whole hormonal issues that I was having post-menopause. Um, I was in menopause for about eight months, and then um, my period started back up again. But it took about a year for my hormones to kind of settle down where I wasn't crying every two minutes and again that was a factor why I wasn't working and why I wasn't social and why a lot of things weren't happening. So it's, it's really been a lot about me advocating for myself and being open and honest um, to others about my experience. So when cancer came and went and through the process of the healing, I think somehow I managed to disassociate myself from that label. Though I am a survivor and I've had cancer, cancer is not who I am.